Shalom! It's Mariah Aliza with Mariah Shali Village and today I am shooting this video to share my short stories and poetry journal. So I am in a Facebook group that is amazing. Um, so basically it's like a co-op. We do a lot of group buys which is amazing for a homeschool mom because you can take the economic advantage by group buying and so one of the buys in that group was a short story and poetry journal which i believe the it was originally called a literature journal and i renamed it short story and poetry journal um so it's from an author or a teacher on Teachers Pay Teachers. I will share the link in the description box of this video. She made the file editable, which I love as a homeschool mom because most of the time I'm going to write our own content. If I don't write our content, I'm going to write like the scope and sequence of how I want it to flow and then I'll find things that I would like to do and then I can sequence it myself because sequencing is a really big deal for me so when it's editable I have a field day so with it being editable I was able to choose my own short stories and poems and then use the template and create my own things that's another plus for me because I can write what I want the lesson to be easily that comes very naturally to me but I don't like to do like the templates and the bordering and the clip art and all that kind of stuff. So when another author has already set that stuff and I can just easily get rid of all of the language and lessons and instructions they had and write my own, but keep the template with the art or even if it's not the art, the space for the art, the formatting, all of that, I'm in heaven. So this is what I did. So my journal will look very different. The link I'm going to place in the description box because I was able to edit it but you will the cover will look very similar so this is how my cover looks I kept the picture I just shrunk it a little bit because I wanted more white space to write short stories and poetry and then I also added um, my son's full name the grade that he's in in the school year he'd be completing um, the course in so this is how ours looks I loved her table of contents page it just had a lot going on so I kind of simplified it more I wanted to keep up with which story or poem he was reading in a particular month so I went ahead and kept the month titles in case you're getting the um, editable file and you're trying to keep up with what I did so I'm gonna share um, three pieces in my journal and I'm gonna walk through how I did it and I'm going to share two short stories and one poem okay and then I kind of stuffed it with some other things so when I put a journal together I'm a language art slash literature you know type of teacher we are a very language based um, literature based homeschool so I tend to spend a lot of my time in what is called like the humanities the languages um, the literatures, the histories, the geographies, that type of thing. So you're going to see me have a lot more of my own things that I build and compile and put together and even write in those subjects. So when I build a journal, pretty much any type of journal, but definitely a language journal, I grab everything that I know I want to go in there, get it printed, then I start sequencing and synchronizing and synthesizing so that I have full cohesion of topics and flow and order of how the topics are presented. That does take a little while. And then I also include a binder pocket in the back so that throughout the course we can add things that I may want to add that I didn't want to necessarily bind in here but I want him to keep in the back of his journal for reference or things that just throughout the course I didn't necessarily think about it um, when I was planning because it didn't really matter to me. It was something I was like, hey, when we get there, I can go print a reference or a cheat sheet or activity sheet if I need to. And so if that happens, boom, we can stick it back here. So that's kind of the gist of that. So the first um, short story that I'm going to share is called Seventh Grade by Gary Soto. So the original um, author of the 
TPT journal, this one here, has 33 short stories and poems. And I don't remember how many were short stories and how many were poems, but I believe it was 33 total. So my first thing was, well, let me look through this list and decide if there's any I want to keep. So I did, at least for grade 7. There are some that I didn't use this year that are in the original file that I will use for grade 8. But I kept 7th Grade by Gary Soto. That was a part of the original. I kept Mother to Son by Langston Hughes. That is a poem. I also kept The Treasure of Lemon Brown. That's a short story. I kept How to Eat a Poem. That's a poem. And that's the only thing that I kept. So out of 33, I kept four for this school year. And then I added the rest on my own that I wanted for Grade 7. So for the... Um, seventh grade Gary Soto obviously I chose it because we're going to seventh grade so one of my favorite TP tiers um, is study all night shout out to study all night um, she has these poetry um, pendants we won't actually be using them as like banners or pendants we're just gonna use them as sketch ups and to later as a reference as we study, but here's what one looks like. So before we read our story um, by Gary Soto, before we read that story, we're going to do her, what she calls a pendant or a banner, and we're just going to use it as a sketch. So it has Gary Soto's name already there. It has a sketch of his image or of his likeness, and then it has things for us to, to write in, which, well, he'll be writing it in. I'm saying us because I do this before him. So I have my own, and I'll be writing all this stuff in throughout the summer for my own guy throughout the school year, but he'll be doing this himself throughout the school year. So a quote to remember, the style, who he's often compared to, any themes that appear in his writing, um, the type of poetry Soto is known for, his motivation to be a poet, his greatest influences, what the poetry is mainly about, um, when he was born, and little lines for childhood, and then five words that describes Soto's poetry. So that's the gist um, that's on the page. So before we read his work, he'll actually do some independent research and study on his life and on his style, his type of work. Then we'll go into the story. So um, the original author has the links because, if, you know, due to copyright issues and even the size of the file loaded up in CPT, she couldn't load all of the stories. But she, the table of contents has a link to all of the stories. So she did the work for you. All you have to do is click it and then voila, the story pops up. So because I'm a language arts teacher, that's my thing. And I know how I like things to just look in general um, as an educator. I don't think I used any one of the stories she linked to. I went and found my own. Um, and I'll explain that in a little bit too. So typically if you want to find your own, especially if a work is very popularized or it's already in the American canon, you can just type the name of the story by the author PDF or doc if you want to be able to edit it. Okay, so that's what I did. I chose this one. Our story looks like this. It's important to me um, to have a lot of things going on. Um, but I won't go into all of that. But definitely I'll give you some. I definitely want the title of the work, the author on the piece. And I really like when um, the story is lined with the numbers. Or is that the other way around? When the story is numbered with the lines so that they can easily... Um, See, you know what line is it on when I'm teaching actively and in some cases not in all in some cases I like when um, the vocabulary words that they need to focus on are identified whether it's highlighted or whether they have this um, superscript number I, I like that too especially if the story is cultural because there'll be a lot of cultural language that neither one of us would know um, automatically you know just being American so I would rely heavily on oh what does that phrase mean or what does what what is that equal to in our American culture so we can have some type of context okay so I printed the story and it's here so Gary Soto's story is about four or five pages 
here and then it also I like this one because it gave me and it's not a lot but it gave me a little author background information so he can easily add to that sketch sheet that I showed you earlier just from, from this paragraph here before he has to go seek other sources in order to find the information. Um, this particular uh, story PDF also came with some assessment questions that I really really liked. Well I really like one page of it so I printed that and then so I have the story and then I have the questions and then um, these colorful line sheets I believe it was a TPT download as well and it was free so um, we like them printed on different color paper and I just chose black for this but he'll be able to answer his questions there on that sheet and all of that I added so I added the story I added those um, assessment questions and I added that lined paper that is not a part of the file that I am placing in the description box for you but what is is this sheet right here so for each story or poem this sheet exists in order for um, the child to learn different literary devices apply them and then there's always some type of project or exploration that is included so for this one um, pretty standard there's recall understand apply analyze and evaluate questions and then there is a section for the child to kind of explain or go more into depth with the concept and then there is the uh, project or the exploration activity. In this case, they're going to write a letter um, to a child who is in the grade they just passed. So in this case, he'll be writing a letter to a student who is in grade six. So once he gets done with this, I went ahead and included um, a sheet of paper that has, you know, the letter template already. So seventh grade letter, it's already set up like a letter he'll have to write a three to four paragraph letter so that's why it's two pages and then the closing the signature and then I just put a illustration box here because he tends to like to sketch so that's the first one I'm going to share the second one that I'm going to share and both the second and the third one are going to be what I added so while seventh grade by Gary Soto was an original poem that's included in this download I am going to share two that were not. And I did add things to the Gary Soto, but that particular page with the activity and the short story itself, I didn't have to think about it. The short story, because I liked it, was already there. The second one that I'm going to share is called I Leave South Africa. And one of the reasons, a lot of the reasons <laughs> that I chose some of my own poems here is because we are going to be studying studying the East next year and so I wanted lots of the short stories and poems to match up with the places that we be studying when possible. Not every single one is like that. I want him to just enjoy some um, poetries and short stories that are just you know fanciful and appropriate for his age and his interest. But this one, when we get to South Africa, we're not going to read a novel. So we are going to read this short story, which is actually an excerpt from um, Kafir Boy in America, which is a very popular novel that most high schoolers read um, if they're studying South Africa at that time. So, of course, I've included the story. And the where I got this story from, I have a multicultural anthology. It's called Tapestry here. Shout out to my girlfriend Yael for sending this to me. I'm always on the hunt for African American and multicultural um, anthologies and like literary things that I can use. So I was skimming through here and I was like, oh wow, we have a short story for South Africa. I'll use this and then I won't have to worry about finding a novel for this particular country. So I just PDF'd it right out of the book so I didn't have to go looking for it anywhere else. Okay, so we have the story, and then after he reads the story, he has this page here. So as you can see, this is the same template from the TPT author that I downloaded the file from, but I have heavily modified it. So I had to create the activities that would pair with this story. 
Um, so if you are going to replace a poem or a story, you have to write out your own questions, write out your own um, like in-depth assignment, that second piece of the sheet that I talked about in the first short story, and you need to write out your own um, exploration or project. So in this case, I chose a journal response. And some of the things that I wanted, some of the things that I added, excuse me, came directly from here because this gives you, you know, things to study and do with the student once the story is over. And some of the things I just added myself because of what I know about my son or what I want to incorporate um, with him this year or just literary skills that I want to teach um, because I have that background. So that's a short story that I added and came up with the lessons and the questions and the projects and things of that nature. Okay, the third that I'm going to share is From Things Fall Apart, and I believe it's Achebe. So again, I think that's the last one. This is set in Nigeria. So when we get to Nigeria, we'll be reading this short story. This is also here in Tapestry. So I was able to just PDF it from there. So we have the story, and then we have the literary page. Remember, it has the questions, the, the challenge here, and then the projects or the exploration. So I had to make that obviously. Again, certain things I grabbed from here, some I came with. Um, I came up with, excuse me, on my own, and um, those are the three that I wanted to share. So I want to share another source, which is African American Literature. This one is by Holt. I'm not a huge textbook fan, but if I'm going to go that route, I do like um, Holt and Globe books. Okay, let me show you. Um, and let me tell you, excuse me, what I grabbed out of here. Okay, yes. So this text we work through this year in grade six. And most of the short stories and poems and essays and um, what else is in here? Articles, columns. It's a host of different um, literary mediums. But most of them are on like the grade six, grade seven level. And so we covered a lot of them this school year. We're in our 2017, 2018 school year. So moving ahead to our next school year in seventh grade, I only grabbed a few things that I felt like, oh, we can wait till grade seven for. Um, and in this case, I only grabbed one for his journal. We are going to read you know, more than one piece. But for the journal, this type of concentrated literary study, I only grabbed one. And that was um, Tupac's In the Depths of Solitude. So I can show it to you. Um, pretty much the same template. Oh, let me show you the sketch because um, Study All Night did have a sketch on Tupac. So have a sketch. So anywhere, anywhere a sketch existed, I created it if it was a poet. So even though we were reading a Gary Soto short story, he's also a poet. So I had that sheet, whereas I didn't have one for um, Achebe because I don't have, it wasn't um, a banner there because um, he's not a poet. Okay, so, and then just a sheet here. So as you can see, um, the poetry template looks a little bit different. I had to include the poem here. This column already exists, but I went ahead and blocked it off. Um, I think I changed one or two annotation directions over here, and then I added a picture of Tupac. Okay, and that is what our short story and poetry journal looks like. In terms of in the back so far in our binder, um, I went ahead and just added the eight literary devices that we're going to work on for grade seven. I typically have been choosing six to eight every single school year since about fourth grade and they just you know become more complex over time I'll go ahead and share with you the eight that we're focusing on for seventh grade doesn't mean he won't learn others um euphemism and oxymoron puns and hyperbole onomatopoeia and alliteration illusion and irony and so with irony we're going to do um situational verbal and dramatic irony and so that is what our short stories and poetry journal looks like for grade seven if you have any questions 
please comment them for me below and I'll do my best to answer you. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, shalom.